Now, if you're driving on Forza Motorsport with a wheel and you're wondering why it just feels so terrible, wow, oh my goodness, these wheel settings are absolutely terrible. It's not your fault. The default wheel settings in Forza Motorsport are so bad. They are diabolically bad. I can't actually believe they released the game in that state because your first experience like this is terrible. So it's not you, it's the game and the setup. But I can tell you, I've literally just returned from racing Mazda MX-5s in real life for a couple of days. And I've been able to tune the wheel settings, whoa, in Forza Motorsport. So they now, I would say, replicate about 95% of what you get in the real life. I'm really surprised at how close I've been able to get this tune on the settings to replicate the real life driving experience because I'm so tuned in to driving this car at the moment. There's a few fundamental points I want to let you know about. The first thing is, crucially, the feedback that you get through the wheel on the limit of grip of the tyres is now very, very, very close to the real thing. I say about 95% close. See here? Oh, that's exactly what happens in real life. I'll put some footage up on the screen. You can see that juddering now. So if I approach a corner uh, trying to carry in too much speed, I'll get the juddering. I'll try and do it here. Too much speed. Can you see that juddering there? You just don't really get that in the default settings. The other thing is the return to centre was way too weak. So have a look here at the return centre. Can you see how the wheel returns to centre there? That is way too weak. And that was um, one of the most uh, uh, fundamental things that I changed. Because if you don't have that, it's almost like you're not really driving a real car at all. Because if you think about a real car, how much weight there is. And that forces... If the tyres really want to return to the centre. So I'm going to show you what I've done with the settings there. I want to start off with the um, dead zones though on the wheel and the pedals. So firstly, on the wheel I've gone for a zero dead zone at the beginning. So basically that means that there's a smooth transition. I've no idea why they default that to one or five. Because it means that it basically stops in the middle then you go. Completely ruins the flow of the car. And also it was doing some weird things like my wheel was in like confuse what was going on and it was all a bit of a madness so i've got zero there i've got 100 percent on the end so there's basically no limit on the edge and you can see that we've got this uh 100 percent uh wheel rotation uh completely matched up with my hands in real life which is absolutely crucial if you want to drive fast and smooth what i've done with the pedals on the accelerator i've done zero percent at the beginning and 100 percent at the end so basically that means zero percent in real life is zero in the game 100 percent in real life is 100 percent in the game so it's a one-to-one -one replication. I've done something different for the brake. By the way, I'm using a Moza R9 direct drive wheelbase here. And I'm using the Fanatec V3 load cell pedals. All connected separately. So on the pedals, I've done 0% at the beginning. But I've done 85% at the end. That means that 85% in real life is 100% in the game. The reason I've done that is I run these load cells quite hard for proper sim racing like i racing and acc so i don't want to have to go all that way in forza so i've just brought it back a little bit in forza so 85 percent that is 85 percent it's now 100 percent full braking in the game that's why i've done that um some critical things that i've removed are things like the damper settings and the road fill and by the way i spent two hours tweaking the wheel settings to make sure i can get this exactly right for you because it was just so bad out of the box if you use these settings I know for the Mazda, for the Mazda, you are getting 90, 95% realism here in Forza, which I'm very, you know, happy about. But how they thought the original setting was acceptable, I don't know. So let me just go into the settings here. It, it might change if you're doing a faster car, like a hypercar or a GT3. Then you might need to adjust the uh, spring rate and stuff like that. So let's go into the advanced input. And you will see here, as I said, steering 0 to 100. Uh, acceleration 0 to 100 and then the brake we've got 0 to 85 for the reasons I explained I'm not using a clutch at the moment but some principles now we're going to come here now I'm running the Moza R9 which is a 9 Newton meter direct drive wheelbase I'm running it at maximum settings in Moza and I've gone up here to 200 in the force feedback now that might be uh, adding some amplification which could uh, add some roughness but to be honest when I've gone through all the settings here at 100, you're just not getting as much strength and feel as you get in real life. And I 100% know that. And now, if I close my eyes driving this Mazda, it's exactly the same through my muscle memory as when I've been racing this car. So you can trust me on that for the Mazda. This is absolutely like spot on. The vibration, I've done 100 as well. 
which is also working really nicely. That that's nice for the general vibrations, but I've turned down some other things. You can see steering a stealth alignment, the weirdest setting. Why the hell this is on by default? I do not know. This is surely a pad setting that they brought over to wheels. It's just bizarre. It's not an accessibility thing because it's just stupid. I don't know why. Turn it off. Turn it off. Put it on zero. It's just madness, by the way. Just that is so important. If you don't turn to zero, I think you have a terrible experience. Mechanical trend, pneumatic, I, pneumatic, I played around, but I couldn't really work it out. So I just kept them at 100. Road fuel, I did put down to zero because I felt like it was adding some inauthentic sort of vibrations and added stuff that didn't seem realistic to me from when I've been driving. Loader kept at 100. Damping, I've turned down to zero. And center spring, I put up to 150. That is a really critical, uh, really critical one. If you feel like the steering is very light and loose and floaty, I would up that one and find your sweet spot. I could tell you for the Mazda, that's a sweet spot for the Mazda. So important for having that replication of real world driving. That's really, really, really important, that one. Uh, dynamic dampers down to nothing. And then steering sensitivity and, and steering linearity, I've gone 50-50. This is super, super, super important. By the way, um, please put your settings in the comments as well. And if you have any thoughts, let me know. But I can tell you this is the ultimate Mazda one. Now, I want to show you the steering sensitivity and linearity, what that does. So if I go out here, you can see, if you imagine, uh, just like in real life in your car, you know, when you're going into a parking space, or let's say you're in the parking space, and then you're getting the wheels to center, how tough it can be, the, the wider you go. That's exactly what we're getting here with the settings I've got. And that's because the tires are physically moving on the tarmac. So this is a very, very, very realistic setting here. And I want to show you again, now you've seen these settings, how that, what I'm talking about with that judder is the most important thing if you want to drive smooth and therefore fast. So if I come in here too fast, see I get that judder. And what I want to do is I want to brake firmly, turn in. Oh no, I've slid it again. I want to turn in and I want to accelerate through the corner just feeling where the judder is, is starting slightly because that's the limit of grip and then keep it just within that and that's something in the real world you can just feel and you can get really into and that's where sims live or die basically so coming into very fast corner here at catalonia so i'll just do it nice and smooth so turn in on the power just started to feel it coming in there You can see I was just trying to tease the judder in and out. Now we've got this tight right-hander here. Nice initial sharp turn in, no judder, no judder, see? And now for the left-hander, I'm not really practiced this track, but... It's all right having some tire score at that moment, but you just don't want to be having it all the way through the exit because you know you'll be losing traction. I'll just show you again up here. I mean, this is very, this genuinely very convincing and the default settings are just terrible. So please, please try it. Get by a Mazda. Try these settings and let me know what you think in the comments. Honestly, I can't wait to hear from you. Lots more fours of videos around here. If the video has helped you subscribe as well, please make it my day and I'll see you in the next video.